Hey everyone, Pastor Stan again, bringing you another message from the Word of God, the Bible. Today we're going to talk about something interesting, at least to me, and I think reflective of, it's a sign of the last days. It's a sign of the last days. And the question we're going to answer today is, is organized religion a business? Is organized religion a business, or is it a something that will help people come to know Jesus as Savior. That's what we're going to look at today. Our scripture is going to be Revelation chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Revelation 2, 9 and 10. The Lord Jesus speaking. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Christians, but they are not, because their church belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. May the Lord add his blessing to the Lord Jesus' words. Now, my friends, although Jesus never commanded his followers to build a place dedicated to worship him, it appears that as soon as they could, they rebelled against him and built church buildings. Then there was the need for organizing the people so those at the top could keep the bills paid and... Uh, they levied a tax called a tithe, even though Jesus had completely done away with the Old system, Testament system of tithing. People picked out their seats, which they sat in every Sunday. They paid a fee to the preacher who kept his job as long as he preached what they wanted to hear. The saving grace of Jesus' sacrifice was replaced with a works system where a person did good deeds and then God owed them heaven. Eventually, though, the building grew old, as did the congregation. The group spent more and more money on the building as it decayed. Young people refused to attend because the older people had a lock on leadership positions and refused to step down. The young people left and built their own building, and the cycle repeated itself. All of this happened because of the Christian's rebellion against Jesus. So, if they're in rebellion against Jesus, my friends, how could they possibly prosper? Is, is God our Father going to bless a group that is rebelling against his Son, the Savior of the world? I think not. I think not. Jesus' final commandments to his followers were quite clear in Matthew 28, 18, following. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commandments I have given you. Well, what happened was, which still happens today, instead of obeying Jesus, organized religion had a business to run, so they didn't have the time to go anywhere except to the potluck fundraiser to raise money to put pads on the pews and, of course, fix the air conditioner. It was easy in rebellion to stay within the safety of the walls of their building than to obey Jesus. Anything that threatened the institution of the local church or denomination was destroyed and dissent was not allowed. Just as it was then, so it is today. Organized religion is a business. So the words of Jesus that do not promote the institution are disregarded or made to mean something other than what Jesus intended. 
All scripture is used by organized religion in this way. So their rebellion is complete. This is the reason Bible believers are persecuted by organized religion. They are oppressed and driven out of organized religion because for them, for them, the institution doesn't come first. Jesus does. So as the Pharisees of Jesus' day persecuted him, so the Pharisees of our day persecute his followers. It's true. The good news is, yay, let's hear some good news. Jesus loves us. Amen. And we show our love for him by obeying his commandments. We show our love to him by obeying the commandments of Jesus. Here's what Jesus said, John 14, 23, John 14, 23 and following. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Organized religion does not love Jesus because they refuse to obey him. And organized religion persecutes the followers of Jesus because they do obey Jesus. This is how organized religion became the church of Satan, as it is written in our scripture lesson for today. I know about your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich, the Lord Jesus says. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Christians, but they are not, because their church belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days. But if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Well, what do we learn today, preacher? Well, here's some things that I've learned. Number one, organized religion is a business. It is definitely a business. Organized religion is loyal to the institution and not Jesus. If you've ever been a part of a local church or a denomination, you must toe the line, especially if you're a pastor. You get your orders from on high, that being the leaders of your group, not in the church, but up the chain at the conference office or the head office or whatever you want to call it. You must follow their ways, otherwise no dissent. Dissent is not allowed. Institution comes first. So organized religion is loyal to the institution and not Jesus. The followers of Jesus, however, number three, are loyal to him. They are loyal to him. And Jesus points out that you're going to be persecuted if you're loyal to him, especially when it comes to organized religion, because the true followers of Jesus will keep pointing out what the Bible says, what Jesus says, which is going to run opposite of what organized religion says. The followers of Jesus are loyal to him, and one day will receive the crown of life. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to die on the cross for my sins. Help me obey Jesus and show that I love him. Keep me safe from organized religion. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, the peace of God be with you, my friends. As always, like and subscribe. Let's get the word out. Send this link to somebody who might be struggling, who might be saying to you, you know, it seems like my church is just a business. Well, send them a link to this and uh, let's get the word out that there are other ways to serve Jesus besides being oppressed by an ungodly system. All right, my friends, good to be with you. As always, God loves you. So do I. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.